Well, it was January of that year, and I was unemployed until June. Uh, the genre was right up my alley. I knew how to basically conduct one, two, three, four, okay. And I'd been in choirs my whole life, so sure, why not? How hard could it be? And quite a surprise to me, I landed the gig. <laughs> Suddenly, I had guaranteed stable income for the first time in my whole life. Suddenly, I was in a leadership role uh, for... Uh, and there were people that relied on me, and suddenly I was back in the world of choirs, which was the last place that I expected to be, trying to make a name for myself in theater. But also, around this time, something started to happen to me that I couldn't explain. I started to lose my voice. I felt like I had this small lump in my throat that I had to swallow around, and it kept growing the more stressed out I got about it. And it felt like someone was kind of choking me from behind. And the worst part was, when I sang, it hurt. It felt like two pieces of sandpaper being rubbed together. I went to singing coaches. I had mas massage therapists working on me. I got acupuncture. Nothing seemed to work in the long term. And finally, after months of desperation, I was recommended to a speech voice pathologist named Aaron Lowe, and he diagnosed me with muscular tension dysphonia, which is where the voice box is put under a lot of pressure by the tension in the muscles around it, causing the vocal cords that normally do this, just nice and relaxed, to bow and therefore not vibrate properly, and that was the cause of all of the pain. So he gave me many treatments of laryngeal massage to loosen up the, all the intricate muscles here in the, in surrounding the voice box. Excuse me. And he was trying to manipulate it back to where it was supposed to be. He knew, though, smart guy, that that wasn't enough. One day he was had me back in his chair. I joked with him I would pay him a whole whack load of money to choke me for an hour. So I was <laughs> lying there. He's working on me. And he says, so Scott, what's happening in your life these days? And I told him some stuff that was stressing me out, some leadership woes, a toxic relationship I was in at the time. And at the end of the session, he sat me up and he said to me, Scott, you're going to stop paying me to keep doing this over and over again. And you're going to go talk it out with someone because you just putting that out there allowed me to move your voice box more than I ever have. I was like, oh, interesting. So he helped me find a therapist. And after trying out a few, I found one that really clicked with me. Her name was Alyssa. And when I told her about my vocal problems, she didn't even bat an eye. She knew exactly what was needed. And when I, um, it, it didn't take her very long to start unlocking all of the emotions that I had pushed down and forgotten about over the years, allowing me to finally open up and process that pain that I didn't let myself feel as an adolescent. I never realized that while making sure that everyone around me was happy, I had told myself that I didn't deserve to have my own voice, or that it's okay to be hurt and scared and vulnerable. And after years of those messages being silently repeated to myself over and over again, it manifested physically in my throat, taking away the one thing that brought me happiness. So in these sessions, I started speaking up, I yelled, I released the emotions, the resentment, the anger that had built up, and, and as I did this emotional release work, like it wasn't a one-time thing, this was over a good chunk of time, um, slowly and surely, that tightness lessened, and that knot shrunk, and I began to find my voice again. And it all came to a head in, in a group therapy session, actually, um, where I was brought to an extremely vulnerable place, uh, and then she had me sing a song for the rest of the group. And just streaming tears, I sang um, Being Alive from a show called Company, which, if you know the lyrics, it really resonated with everything I was going through, and suddenly I started finding my voice again. This was a huge turning point for me. The whole experience taught me how deeply our voices are connected to our emotions and just how important it is for us to have the freedom to sing to express them. Over the course of six years, I had grown from seeing my position as a director of a choir to just a stable job to support my theater career to something that was important and that I was facilitating something bigger than me 
for people who were in search of a place to belong just like I was when I was hurting. And this is why when politics and personalities and egos eventually got in the way of me being able to fully and freely do that, I felt that I had the strength to leave that organization to form my own vocal ensemble, which just celebrated the conclusion of its first year. Yeah. And let me tell you, being in front of those people, free of politics, who are all there for the right reasons, is just a true celebration of what the experience of choral singing can actually be for everyone. Love you too. Love you too. <laughs> so, singing makes me happy. But I think getting people singing together makes me even happier. I really want to encourage you all to find a vocal group that suits your tastes and your needs and just give it a try to see the difference that it can make in your life. You can go online, you can look up all the stats about all the benefits, the physical and emotional benefits of choral singing. It's really easy, you can just, tons of articles. And you know what? If you're on the fence about it, just remember that that experiment we just did, it's right there. It's in your DNA. It's just waiting to come out. My group's motto is all voice, no limits. And there really are none. Hush, my darling, don't fear, my darling. The lion sleeps tonight. Hush, my darling. Don't fear, my darling. The lion sleeps tonight. Here we go. One. One more time through. <laughs>